Hi, everybody. My name is Andrew Arendt. I'm Director of Operations for the Robert A. Fox Leadership Program at the University of Pennsylvania, and we're excited that you're joining us today. So this session as part of the New Student Orientation is all about the Fox Leadership Fellowship. So you've probably had the opportunity to hear from um, Provost Pritchett and a few other folks on campus about the importance of civic engagement, and particularly coming up on this year, uh, which, we, which we have deemed as the year of civic engagement, it's gonna be super important that you get involved. And one of the ways that you can get involved um, on campus is through some of the fellowships that we have to offer. And so I'm psyched to, to be able to host a few of uh, the students that have kind of done these fellowships in the past um, to kind of talk about their experience and talk about kind of the opportunities that they were able to have um, while they did the fellowship. Black Leadership actually hosts two different types of fellowships, right? And we have a good um, uh, representation of those types of fellowships here today. So we offer service fellowships, right, which are, which are opportunities, kind of like internships, right, to work alongside um, some leading uh, thought, thought makers in both the public and nonprofit uh, sectors, right, that are doing some really important work both here in Philadelphia um, and nationally as well. And then we also offer research fellowships which are intended to provide the opportunity for students to kind of do original research with some leading thought makers as well. And so with, uh, I'll take the opportunity now to just kind of introduce everybody. So Nat, do you want to start off and introduce yourself and tell uh, everybody a little bit about your, your background? Hi, I'm Nat. Um, I am from Thailand, Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, I am in the class of 2022 and I'm majoring in PPE with a minor in gender studies and my fellowship this summer was with Girls Inc's public policy team. Awesome. Grace, how about you? Why don't you take it next? Hi everyone, I'm Grace. Um, I'm from Centerville, Virginia, just south of DC. Um, I was a part of the class of 2020, so I just graduated. Um, I majored in um, the biological basis of behavior, which is now being rebranded as neuroscience, um, with a double minor in medical sociology and health services management. Um, and I fellowed with um, Child USA in both the spring and the summer. Awesome. Caroline, how about you go next? I'm Carolyn. I grew up in Hong Kong. I also just graduated like Grace. My major was PPE with minors in urban studies and consumer psych. And my fellowship this summer was at the Brookings Institution, a DC-based think tank, but I also was a Penn program on opinion research and election studies fellow. Cool, awesome. She did a lot of research uh, with our various programs. And Theo, how about you round us out? I'm Theo, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, just graduated like Grace and Caroline, so class of 2020. <laughs> Um, majored in political science and a minor in law and society. Um, and so my fellowship this summer was with um, the Greater Philadelphia Coalition Against Hunger. Awesome. So Nat and Theo, you guys did more kind of service-oriented uh, fellowships. Caroline and, and Grace, you guys did more research-oriented fellowships. So let's start on the service side. So Nat, talk to me through like, what is Girls Inc? Right, what, what is the organization and what, what did they have you do uh, while you were working on the public policy team? So um, Girls Inc is a nonprofit. Um, the, the branch that I work with is based in DC, but essentially it's a nonprofit that has like many national like headquarters. So there's one in um, New York where it's like the marketing communications where uh, the other intern works at and also like just a few others. Um, so I mostly help them with kind of like looking up policies. And since the election is coming up, I help them look at like how girls can get engaged. What is like the suppression um, for people who are at like un in underprivileged communities and in terms of like our demographics with like girls who are high school age, how do we empower them? How do we help them to be able to kind of have a grasp of the world and also just in specific because I'm working in this department in like policy and in terms of like aware like raising awareness about things that they care about. So um, I did a lot of like, I jumped on a few like government calls, which I thought were super cool coalition calls. I um, just dabbled here and there helping them with logistical stuff and uh, administrative stuff. And I thought it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, the cool thing about the, the Girls Inc. opportunity is we place uh, a fellow every summer with the DC team, right, the policy team in that did. We place one 
um, with the marketing team up in New York. And then we, they also have a local chapter here um, in the Philadelphia area. I mean, you all may have heard through one of the other sessions from uh, Joel Gross, who did the, the opportunity with the um, Philadelphia and Southern New Jersey chapter of Girls Inc. as well. Um, and so we, we had tons of opportunities. So, so Theo, on the, so the Greater Philadelphia Coalition Against Hunger right, is, uh, is specifically located here in Philadelphia. And I know they do a lot of food um, uh, insecurity work. Um, and you also then worked, I believe, on some public policy stuff. So talk us through what did your fellowship look like um, with the coalition? Yeah, so I was a policy intern at the coalition. Um, basically, I just did a lot of support work. So, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of analyzing policy. It was a lot more of, um, you know, lobbying efforts, I'd say. So yeah. getting in touch with um, Philadelphia, you know, government, city council, city government, but also like congressmen. Um, so we got in touch with uh, Senator Casey's office a lot, um, worked together to gather stories um, and data from, you know, the clients that the coalition serves locally in Philly, and then use those stories to send to Senator Casey to talk about on the Senate floor. Um, so it was a lot of that. I did a bit, a lot of research about um, the intersections of race and food insecurity this summer. Mm. Um, so that took a big chunk of my time as well. Yeah, how did um how did COVID play out with because this moment that we're in right now, right? I would imagine is a huge, uh, uh, important moment uh, in you know trying to ensure that people have access to food because COVID kind of, um, you know, impacted well every aspect of our life, but in particular those right that live in in food deserts or rely on you know public assistance. I'm just curious from your perspective, how did that um, play out over the summer? Yeah, yeah, I mean. COVID, obviously, there's a huge spike in need um, nationwide, particularly in Philly. Um, I think we saw that with the shutdown and with the economy slow down, um, the unemployment rate skyrocketed. Um, and the result was that people just didn't have money for food. So um, we saw a lot of, it was a lot of scrambling to um, get Congress to increase SNAP benefits. SNAP is the new name for food stamps. Um, so to increase SNAP benefits for um, the duration of like this crisis, which hasn't happened yet. So we're still waiting on Congress to pass another another COVID bill. Um, yeah. But that was a big focus of the of the uh, fellowship. Yeah, no, and the great thing about the placing folks with the, the Philadelphia Coalition Against Hunger is we usually place two fellows there. So one in the, the role that, that's here that you were in the summer, right, more on the policy side. And then one you all may have watched the, the session with um, Provost Pritchett um, and, and Jackson Edwards was a part of that uh, discussion. And he was more on the kind of hotline side and helping to kind of administer some of the local local programs as well. Let's shift gears just a little bit and focus a little bit more on the, the research fellowships that we, that we have. And also they're, they're, they're kind of public policy oriented as well. So Caroline, you, you were with um, Brookings, right? And did uh, some public policy work. You worked with their, their governing so talk us through what, what your fellowship this past summer um, looks like. Yeah, so just to explain to people who might not know what a think tank does, Brookings yeah. kind of like recommends policy solutions to different actors in government through really extensive and nonpartisan research. So I was lucky to be able to work with my scholar EJ Dion on that. And I think I really learned like three main things. The first was just like the gathering data part of the research. The second was how to get those ideas out there into the mainstream so people actually hear them. And the third was learning firsthand from scholars and other RAs in the program about what it means to do research at a think tank, which was really valuable to me. So in terms of the data gathering part, I compiled a lot of memos. For example, I compiled like over 40 memos on competitive House and Senate races that were likely to flip um, for like future articles. And in terms of getting the message out there, we recently released a report on civic duty voting. So we had like a whole event with over a thousand attendees. We published articles on various news sites. I helped EJ Dion with his bi-weekly Washington Post articles, which were really fun. And um, finally, just like I got to meet so many cool and interesting people who were studying such diverse things, not just in governance studies, but all over Brookings. And honestly, that might have been one of the most valuable parts of the fellowship. 
That's awesome. Yeah, no, EJ, EJ is great. And I always look forward to, to reading his uh, Wall Street Post article uh, uh, every week, especially when I know that, that we had a fellow and a, and a, and a Penn student uh, help out with it. So, so that's always exciting. So Grace, you, you are the longest tenured uh, fellow that we have on the panel today because you got to work with Marcy, and Marcy Hamilton and the Child USA team, um, not only this past summer, but also in the spring as well. And so I know you guys worked on a bunch of different projects. So, so tell everybody what Child USA is um, and kind of all of the different things that, that uh, you and your fellow fellows worked on um, this past summer and in the spring as well. Yeah, um, so Child USA is kind of structured the same way. Um, it's a think tank and they're doing a lot of research on child abuse and neglect in various parts of society. So, um, I mean, they kind of have their, um, their work cut out for them. They're doing a lot of different projects um, that are really cool to be a part of. So in the spring, um, our tasks were a little bit more varied. So we did a lot with the Game Over Commission, which is centered on the Larry Nassar sex abuse scandal um, and looking into media surrounding that. Um, we also did a lot with um, the Boy Scouts of America, um, helping them code through. Um, they got a lot of reports um, that uh, survivors of the sexual assault within the Boy Scouts of America. They had um, kind of reports of their abuse. So we helped code that um, when the right around the time when the Boy Scouts um, uh, declared bankruptcy. We also did a lot of research into scholarly articles that have to do with um, child sex abuse. And we kind of did um, a little literature review for them. Um, we also accumulated numbers for a hotline that could be a national wide helpline um, for parents to get resources for different parts of raising a child. Um, and then the last thing we, we kind of helped with in the spring was um, helping to accumulate resources for a portal um, to act as um, kind of a help uh, and resource area for um, survivors, anyone interested in sex abuse, um, or just general abuse in different areas. So there was a religious area, there was sports, there was um, general wellness um, resources. So um, that actually was created and I was able to kind of see a lot of my, the projects that I recommended for that. Um, so that was cool to see. And then in the summer, the Fox Fellows worked on one project together. We were um, researching federal court judges who work in the family court um, and kind of looking into their education and their backgrounds, hoping to see that they had some sort of experience or education in the fam in family court and family law. Um, and we ended up researching 2,185 judges over the summer. So we were very busy with that, so. Wow, that, that, that's a lot of work. Um, <laughs> One of the, the great things about the, the child opportunity is we hire fellows um, uh, for Marcy and her team. So Marcy Hamilton is a professor of practice um, here on campus um, uh, with the Fells Institute of Government and also teaches sometimes uh, in the law school and also some undergrad class, or undergraduate classes as well. Um, and so we hire fellows through the FOX program um, with Child USA every semester. Um, so we will be hiring some uh, for this upcoming fall and then in the spring and the summer as well. Um, many of the opportunities that you heard today are, are uh, so, so working with Child USA, uh, excuse me, working with, with Girls Inc. that Matt did, or working with Bookings, or, or the Greater Coalition Against Hunger, or, or summer opportunities, right? So those are fellowships that we, that we hire specifically over the summer. But then, Caroline, you also worked um, with our colleagues over at the Penn Program on Opinion Research and Election Studies, which has the unfortunate acronym of PORS, but we go with it. Um, and uh, uh, so talk to me a little bit about that, that research, because you kind of did two different research opportunities, right? Um, and I'd be curious to understand in your mind how, how they, they, they benefited one another, or how they kind of played together, and maybe what you learned uh, through, through each one. That's a good question. I did pours my junior year, and I think yeah. it really set the stage for allowing me to develop the skills that I needed at Brookings. I honestly don't know if I would have been as successful at Brookings without that research background during my undergrad career. At PORS, um, I worked with Dr. Harbin um, on her research related to the opioid epidemic in Philly. So what we did was we compared like the articles written in the Philadelphia Inquirer and the Philadelphia Tribune about 
drug users and how their language differed. And I thought that was really interesting. I learned how to code um, qualitatively. And I also learned how to write memos, which was really important for my work at Brookings. So I think that the two were connected, not in terms of topic necessarily, but in terms of skill sets. And my undergrad research was definitely very valuable with the boys. That's awesome. I'm curious just from all of you, and that I'll, I'll start with you, but I'll, I'll come to Grace and Theo too. Like what skills do you feel like you've learned or you took away from um, the fellowship this past summer that, that are gonna potentially help to set you up for whatever you want to try and do um, down the road in, in your future. We'll start with, with, with Matt. Um, honestly, I think like, I think because I, I'm the youngest here, so I yeah. have the least experience. Um, being able to work at Girls Inc. kind of like opened me up to what it actually means to work like in public policy, because prior to this, I only had like theoretical knowledge. Like I knew I did the public policy process class and I was like, I knew what it was, but I didn't really know what it was like to actually work there. So I think it really helps to clarify like what kind of work I want to do and if this is something that's suitable for me. And like apart from that, I think it's also kind of inspiring. Like I would say to just see the amount of passion and dedication that um, the team has. Our team like has only three full-time staff and they do so much work. Like I don't even know how they do that much work. Um, I don't like I, I really don't know um, but like I, I think seeing like the kind of people that you actually meet and you work with in these organizations really helps to kind of like ground down what kind of work and who you might want to potentially work with in the future. I think that was my biggest takeaway. Awesome. Grace, how about you? What was your, your kind of biggest biggest takeaway or, or the skill that you feel like you learned through your, your two, two semesters with Cloud? You okay? Yeah, um, I, I learned a lot about what it means to work for a nonprofit and what it means to work for a think mm. tank. Um, but I think the most that I took away was just, um, you know, from Marcy's leadership. Um, I mean, she actually might be the coolest person I've ever met. Um, <laughs> You know, she's this big shot lawyer. She defended a case in front of the Supreme Court. She was nominated for a Pulitzer, but every single week we would have meetings and she was really big on, you know, having no deference to her. She really wanted us to speak our minds, to ask questions. And I learned a lot about like leadership from her and what it means to be, um, to stay true to who you are in the face of adversity. Um, and so it's been, it, it's been really, really cool to um, kind of, learn from her over the last, I don't know, six months. That's amazing. And Thea, how about you? In your, your, your short time, I know you're only with the, the coalition for about three months over the summer, and I know it's, it's, you're, you're about to head into law school, but I'm curious, what, what, uh, what, what did you take away uh, from, from the, the, your experience with the coalition this past summer? Yeah, um, I think it was two things broadly. So first, like, others have said already, like just learning what it means to work for a small nonprofit. Um, the coalition has, I think 10, maybe 12 staff people. So it's not a big group. And as someone who's planning to do this kind of public interest work after I graduate law school, like these are the kinds of organizations that I'm gonna be working for. So it was good to see kind of what that dynamic was like. Um, and the second thing was, um, you know, we can sit here and talk about and read about what it's like to work in government. But when you're actually there and you're actually writing letters to, you know, Congress people and you're getting the responses back and you're trying to figure out, you know, what is the effective way of, of getting your policy into law. Um, so it was really interesting learning that kind of aspect of it, particularly on the administrative side. Um, we worked a lot with the USDA, who's in charge of the food access programs federally. So, um, you know, kind of learning about how important the administrative side of government is rather than just the, the legislative or the executive. Awesome. And I just have, well, I'll just finish up with one last question for all four of you. Um, and it's so everybody that's watching this this uh, this session today, right, are incoming uh, first year students. So if you were back in their shoes and you were starting your uh, undergraduate experience all over again, uh, I know I know three of you all just graduated, so this may be a very sentimental question for you. Um, what what recommendation or advice um, would you uh, present to, to you know students that are new to the to the to the Penn community? 
Matt, I'll start with I'll start with you. Sorry. Um, this is hard because I feel like I'm not done, so I'm not thinking straight either. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mainly I would just chill out and let it like take form. Because honestly, I'm not sure what kind of work I still want to do. In fact, I don't even know what country I'm going to be working in. So um, <laughs> just go with the flow. Uh, you get a good opportunity, you take advantage of it, and you'll learn something from it at the very least. And uh, yeah, even if you regret it, it's like you learned something. <laughs> awesome. Carolyn, how about you? What advice do you have for, for new students, to, new, new, new members of the Penn community? I think my main piece of advice is always try something that you think is interesting or that you're passionate about even if you don't know what you're passionate about and you see something that you're like wow that seems cool but it seems like no one else is doing it or it seems like it might be hard to do or get into like always just shoot your best shot and even if you get rejected try again because i got rejected from a lot of things like my, like my acapella group and like the main club that i was involved in at penn the first time i applied that I applied again and my by my senior year I was president of both of those groups so don't let rejections set you back and always just like shoot for whatever you're interested in. Awesome. Yeah how about you? What advice do you have for, for new students? Um, my advice is probably don't take any dumb classes. I think my, <laughs> <laughs> my biggest regret is I like I had a more narrow scope of what kind of classes I wanted to take than I should have. And the result was I took a lot mm. of dumb things to fill requirements that were boring. And don't be afraid to drop a class if it sucks. Just Penn is, you have, there's so many great professors and there's so many great classes and you can fill all the requirements taking interesting classes instead of terrible ones. So don't, you don't have to take the dumb classes that everyone uses to fill requirements if you don't want to, because there's going to be other interesting options that fit. And just remember that every, even if a class is, is somebody's cup of tea, it may not be yours, right? So don't hesitate yeah. to try and figure out what's going to be best, best for you. And Grace, finish us up. Uh, what, what advice do you have for, for incoming students? Um, I would say just try to make the most of um, the eight semesters that you have at, at Penn. Um, I know it's hard coming in in a different way, I think, than any class has ever come in. But speaking from the perspective of someone who had their last semester on campus kind of taken away from them, you you don't you kind of take a lot for granted. So I mean, even though it is starting differently, you're still in the Penn community and the friendships and community that you start forging now is going to make it all the better to transition to campus and make the most of your time on campus. But also there are so many groups that are doing so much and working really hard to try and make their um, their day to day activities as as similar as they would be um, if they were on campus. So really try to make the most of of the opportunities given to you, because as someone who you know, has kind of graduated out of the system. I'm definitely going to miss it a lot um, and having that community. Awesome. Well, thank you guys all for, for joining us today uh, to talk about your, your fellowships. I really appreciate it. Um, for everybody watching, right, if you want to learn more um, about the Fox Leadership Program, don't hesitate to visit our website um, or reach out directly to us, which is foxleadership at youthpen.edu. Um, we're happy to answer any questions that you may have about um, the fellowship opportunities that we have or, or any other questions that you have about uh, you know navigating Penn and, and being successful. We're here to be your, your advocates and your support system and even if you're, you're starting off your semester um, or your, your, your Penn experience remotely, right, it doesn't mean that uh, you can't get involved in, in all the great things that are going on um, at the Penn community. So thank you for joining us and uh, please be in touch.